Well, hello there, good morning kids. Welcome to another class with Teacher Roy. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it, thank you. Thank you, thank you, I know, I know, thank you. Um, today, today it's Wednesday, May 13. Yes, Wednesday, May 13. We are in the belly bottom of the week. Oh yes, I know, I know, it's belly bottom of the week. We're getting closer to the most amazing, most amazing Friday. Oh yes, yes, I know, I know. It's beautiful, it's beautiful. Now, uh, before we start, let's pass the list, let's pass the list. Um, let's see who's watching, who's watching my, my videos. So, let's start. Isabella, Sophie, Beas, Cesar, Luis, Rachel, Shadana, Emir, Isra, Edu, Sueli, Remy, Abby, Valerie, Mitch, Twincy, Michelle, Georgette, Xavier, Anna, George, Dante, Alexa, Tobarcita, Karish, Becca, Asa, and Mrs. Patty. There we go. My kids, first things first, what's up? I hope you're doing fine. I hope you're doing great. I hope that everyone at home is healthy. And uh, I I'm always wishing you the best, okay? Remember to wash your hands. Remember to stay safe. Don't go out unless it's necessary, okay? Now, let's get down to business. Let's start working. Okay, okay, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. You don't like working, I know. But uh, we have to do it, we have to do it, okay? And don't worry, it's gonna be uh, quite easy for you to work. It's gonna be um, something not that difficult for you to do. So it's okay, relax, okay, relax. Um, are you ready? I said, are you ready? Ah, don't worry, it's gonna be um, an easy work today. So, let's get down to business. Let me share my screen with you. There we go. Today, we're gonna be working with phonology writing from pages 32 to page 34. Again, phonology writing, pages 32 and page 34. Understood? Good. Then we're going to be working with Global Citizenship, pages 115 to page 117. Again, Global Citizenship from pages 115 to page 117. Good. Now that we have this, uh, let's get down to business, okay? With phonology writing, we're going to be working with the same that we have been working before, okay? Uh, we were working with nothing else than the pharaohs, ancient Egypt, okay? So um, let's do a little flashback. Flashback. There we go, flashback. Um, with the flashback, we saw this story about uh, the pharaoh in Egypt and his ancient tomb, the curse that it uh, unleashed, and how these two persons unleashed the curse of the Pharaoh, what happened, how they activated, and all this stuff. You already learned about uh, ancient Egypt, the tombs, the curses, the hieroglyphs, all this stuff that we have seen before since fifth, since fifth grade, okay? Now, uh, keeping in mind all this stuff, we have to work with these pages. End of flashback. Okay, end of flashback. Uh, page 32. Enrich going deeper. Anasis placed a curse on his tomb so no one would disturb him in the afterlife. Brainstorm all other ways he could have protected his tomb. Think of many other ways he could have protected his tomb, okay? I'm gonna give you a few seconds to do it. Okay, once we finish that, I need you to write it down in here. 
and tell me uh, what, what other ways he could have protected his tomb. Once you do that, we head to the next part. Anasis cursed left to Lapis and Seth, living in fear as punishment for robbing his tomb. If you could write a curse to protect your most valuable possession, think of the most valuable thing that you have. And if you could write a curse to protect it, what would your curse be? Write your curse in the box, then explain what valuable uh, what valuables uh, your curse would be protecting. Okay, in here you have to write your curse, and then what is it protecting? Okay, again, I'm gonna give you a few minutes. Okay, so you can do it. After six months of waiting for you, we finally get this done. And then we can continue with the work. What was your curse about? What are you protected? I'm sure some of you are gonna be protected, maybe video games, maybe your mom, maybe your dad, maybe your house, maybe your doggies. Uh, Isabella is probably protecting her BTS book. Alexa probably protecting Jimin from BTS. I don't know, stuff like that. Um, Emir is probably protecting his Fortnite account. Stuff like that. I'm sure all of you have something to protect. Abby and Xavier protecting the Pokemons of all over the world. <laughs> now, um, let's get uh, with the other part of the exercise. The first night after Lapis and Seth robbed the tomb, Beatles invaded their house. The second night, Cerberus. The three-headed dog attacked him. That part is not um, making too much sense to me. I don't know about you, but to me it doesn't make that sense. Uh, how are they mixing the Greeks with Egypt? Uh, it doesn't make that much sense. But, uh, huh. okay, let's leave it like that, okay? Then... The story said the torture continued each night. What scary things do you think might have happened next to the thieving siblings? Think of at least three scary events that may have been a part of the curse on the next few nights. What do you think happened on night three? Then what do you think happened on night four? And finally, what do you think happened on night five? What do you think actually happened with the brothers. You will already know that the first night, Beatles invaded the house. Not the Beatles, not the music band, okay? <laughs> Just making sure that it's not the music band. But yeah, not the music band, okay? Um, it's, not the, it's not them. And then Cerberus, again, doesn't make sense, but it's fine. Sorry about the, the noise that they're making outside. Uh, then we continue with with activity. Once you wrote it, I'm sure you're gonna use your imagination and and write really scary things that could be um, making the siblings get extremely, extremely nervous and extremely scared of of the curse. Okay. Then we continue to page 34. Enrich visible thinking, analytical thinking, risk and rewards. Lapis and Sev knew it was a big risk to open an Aces tomb, but they did it anyway because they thought the reward of the riches inside would be worth it. Getting to a team of four people, no, obviously not, you're going to do it by yourself. Imagine you are a research team. In this case, you're going to be just a researcher. And have a chance to go visit some of the most beautiful tombs in Egypt. But you would have to leave home for two weeks and live in a tent in a desert. Brainstorm all the risks and rewards of this experience below. So you're living home, you're gonna live in a tent like camping, but in the desert. What good things and what bad things could come out from this experience? What are the risks of living in, a, in the tent for two weeks in the desert? And what are the rewards? You have to write risk and rewards. How many? Three. 
Three risk, three rewards. Okay, sounds good? Good, good, good. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh, no, no. Hey, 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 okay, okay, okay. Two. Two risk and two rewards. Sounds good? Perfect. Two risk and two rewards. That's it. Based on the risk and rewards you found, would you go on the trip? Why or why not? You have to write down here. Yes, I would go on the trip because it would be the most amazing experience. No, I wouldn't go to the trip because I don't like the idea of being in the sand because this, because of that. Maybe there's a scorpion, maybe there's a snake. I don't know, something like that, okay? You have to think about it. Um, once you finish that, oh, look, a beautiful camel. Once you finish that, we go to the last part of phonology. Do your best, write about it. Do your best, write about it. All right, in here, what are you going to be doing? It says, Egyptian pharaohs designed elaborate tombs so they could enjoy their riches and their favorite things in the afterlife. Remember that the ancient Egyptians believed that after a time, the pharaohs, the mummified pharaohs would come back to life and they would enjoy everything that they had inside their tomb. That's why everything that they loved, their most valuable possession was inside the tomb because they would come back and enjoy it like they should, okay? Uh, with this idea, yeah, you have to keep it in mind. And then it says, write a decree. Uh, explain where you want your tomb to be built. If you're going to imagine you are actually a pharaoh. You are a pharaoh and you're going to build your tomb. You're going to write instructions of where you want your tomb to be built wherever you want, uh, how you want it to be, how you want it to be outside, how you want it to be inside, and how would you want it to be protected? Okay, I imagine that my tomb, it's going to be in, the, um, let's think of a place. Japan. I want my tomb to be in Japan and I want it, um, extremely big that they can see it everywhere i want it to be made of gold and diamonds and uh inside i want it to have many secret chambers and labyrinth so you could get lost that would be a way to protect my my treasure and um and i would have to write all of those things that i'm saying okay keep in mind that you are a pharaoh that means you're extremely powerful and rich there's no limits. You choose how things are going to be understood. There are no limits. Obviously, you're not going to say, oh, I want it to be in the moon, because in that time, men didn't go to the moon. Okay, just making sure you, you, um, you understand that part. Men didn't go to the moon, so um, we cannot be saying that kind of stuff, okay? Other than that, whatever you want. So you have to write down where you want it to be built, what you want inside of it, and how would you protect it, okay? You have to write it down in here. Remember, there is no limit for you because you are the pharaoh, okay? Perfect. Now, let's continue to global citizenship. Uh, in global citizenship, you're gonna be working with a reading it says the maasai tribe you have to read uh, this page so you could answer the following page also you have a little video here you can click on it so you can watch the images and then after you read the the whole text we go to the next page that is page uh, 116 in here on page 116 you have two exercises, one and two. You have the game zone, the game zone, we're not gonna do it, but we're going to answer the two exercises. Uh, the first one, it says, fill in the blanks with the correct answers. Sam learned that the Maasai rice to use food for food. 
Uh, the Maasai built fences around their houses made up. The Maasai used to gods who were cows. The Maasai huts, remember a hut is a house, were made of and all the information that you need is in the reading. So you have to read it, okay? Then you need to circle true or false according to the information that is in the reading too. Sam watched the Maasai women hunt lions, true or false. The tour guide said that the Maasai move around to find grass for their cattle. Sam learned that the Maasai use the cattle for food and clothing. The weather where the Maasai live is cold and snowy. Circle, true or false. As you can see, it's not that difficult. Very good. Then we continue to page 117. On page 117, that is actually the last page that we're going to be working with, uh, it tells us physical geography and culture of the Eastern Hemisphere. Remember, in global citizenship, we have been seeing the Eastern Hemisphere. Now, you have to remember all the things that we have seen. So the first question that they're asking you is, what is culture? Try to remember what is culture and write it down. Number two, what areas of a person's life could be part of their culture? Give two examples. You need to write two examples of culture. What is culture for a person? Okay, for example, for we Mexicans, what is part of our culture? Okay, you have to write down two examples. Number three, what are two examples of how physical geography impacts the culture of the Eastern Hemisphere, how is the geography of the place affecting the Eastern Hemisphere? Uh, how is uh, the fact that they are close to the ocean affecting their, their culture? How is it that maybe they live, uh, they have extreme cold, extreme heat? Uh, how is it affecting them? Maybe that there is a lot of sand, maybe that there is a lot of different weather, different uh, climates. You have to write two examples in there, okay? According to all the things that we have seen about the Western Hemisphere, remember, uh, sorry, the Eastern Hemisphere. Remember that the Eastern Hemisphere, we're talking about um, Asia, Africa, Europe, all these uh, parts that are on the other side of the planet, okay? Number four, that is the last part. Which of the following statements explain how the physical geography of the Eastern Hemisphere can impact its cultures? Circle all the correct answer. You need to circle from, the, from these uh, four statements, the correct ones. The statement A says, the climate of an area can cause people to wear certain types of clothing. Is it correct or incorrect? If it is correct, circle it. If it is incorrect, leave it like that. People eat different types of food based on what types of crops can grow in the area where they live. They eat different things according to what can grow where they live. Is it true? Is it correct? Or is it incorrect? C, the number of jobs in an area impacts whether the people are poor or rich. Is it true? Is it correct? And D, people travel in different ways depending on the weather and land features in their area. They move in different ways according to the weather and the land the geography of the of the place where they live is it correct or not circle them if they are correct leave them like that if they are incorrect that is all the work for today that is wednesday um remember if you have doubts if you have complications with the work you can always get online into the live session that we have in zoom Kids, like I said yesterday, the live sessions, the days and the time, they don't change. They are always Mondays and Wednesdays from 10.30 to 11. Always. You don't have to be sending me messages, teacher, at what time? Teacher, no. Mondays and Wednesdays, 10.30 to 11. Always. If we have a special live session, I will let you know. But other than that, it's always. Mondays and Wednesdays from 10.30 to 11. 
if you have doubts, if you have complications, and if you don't have them and you just want to say hi and you want to be there, go ahead and do it, okay? I have no problems. I'm happy to see you there. The kids that have been joining, uh, I hope that I have been, been able to uh, answer your problems, your difficulties. And, uh, and that's all for today. Sadly, we have to go now. I know, I know it's sad. I know it's sad, but uh, we have to go. So I'll see you tomorrow, kids. Tomorrow, Thursday, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Don't go out. Help mom, help dad around the house uh, clean your bedroom. Be nice to each other, okay? So see you, take care, and love you all. Bye-bye.